Hey everyone, today we are taking apart the most expensive thing I've ever taken apart, which is a Titan V that we bought ourselves for review. The testing's all done at this point, we just need to film that. But we're gonna do a teardown here, look at the PCB, which is quite interesting, and uh, see what we can learn about the inner workings of the Titan V card by NVIDIA. This is a $3,000 graphics card, and hopefully we get ROI and it doesn't die in the process. But before we get into that, this coverage is brought to you by iFixit, Dot com and their ProTech Toolkit. iFixit is refreshing their ProTech Toolkit in time for the holidays. You can find a link in the description below to the ProTech Toolkit and other toolkits that iFixit sells. We find the ProTech and Essentials kits to be the most useful for DIY enthusiasts. For the exterior of the card, you can see that it's got this sort of off beige, like, like if you took, if you took this box, if we took this white box and maybe left it in the back of a car for about two or three years, it'd probably look about the color of the Titan V's shroud. So that's about the color of the shroud. I, I guess they're going for like a champagne color. Uh, also reminds me of an old NES. So that's what we've got for the outside. For the rest of it though, this is just the standard cooler that Nvidia does. So we've got the Titan XP and the Titan V here next to each other and it's the same cooler. It should be the same heat sink as well. We'll find out when we take it apart. And other than that, I mean, yeah, all the specs are in our news video, so no point going over those. Let's just take it apart and see what it looks like underneath. So we need some Phillips heads, and I think that's about all we're going to need. I'll take a moment here and mention our new mod mat that I'm using right now. This is an anti-static mat. We're pretty excited about it. You can find a link in the description below for pre-orders. And... Uh, it's going to help us protect the card. I'll put the ESD strap. So once we get into the card, I'll switch over to the anti-static strap just because it's 3000 bucks. So no point in killing it over something really easy to control like that. This back plate's held on by a bunch of tiny screws. We've shown these before. The trick to these when you put them back on is to be very gentle. You do not need much force at all to tighten these back on. As soon as you face resistance, stop immediately. Because if you keep going, uh, it will snap the screw at the stem, at the screw head. So we don't want that. We've done it before, actually. All right, so this is the same as all the Founders Edition cards and Front... Or, well, Founders Edition, not Frontier Edition. All the Founders Edition cards are built this way. Underneath here, we're going to have some hex heads that hold the base plate into the, the back of the card, the back of the PCB that secures those together. So here's our back plate. And if we bring the camera back over here, you can already see the back side of the PCB is pretty dense. So the front side is going to be very dense. I think this is a 16 phase VRM. So this is going to be a pretty healthy sized VRM. It'll take up most of the board height vertically. And there's our hex heads. So we need to take those off. Those secure the vapor chamber, which I'm assuming there's a vapor chamber. So let's, uh, let's get these reduced. These hold the base plate in. If you've ever wondered what I think about while taking out a thousand screws, it's normally things like, what thumbnail would be successful but not over the top? An example of over the top but successful would be something like, what could go wrong with a picture of the card and maybe some fire or some crazy facial expressions? As much as I would love to do that for the, for the views, it goes against sort of what we do here. Uh, so we will not have what could go wrong in the thumbnail, but we do have two larger screws here as a standard on all the Founders Edition designs, and then three of the smaller ones for the expansion shields. So we can take those out. These don't really need to necessarily come off. Uh, generally, I'm, I can't remember exactly, but you don't really you don't have to take all of these out. It does allow you to take the rest of the vapor chamber out, though, if we end up wanting to do that. So we may do that anyway, but it's not a requirement if you're just redoing the thermal paste or something, for example. Okay, cool. Let's 
So what's holding us on? Thermal pads. Thermal pads are holding us on at this point. Holy crap, that is so much thermal paste. So uh, yeah, fan connector over here is what we just disconnected. We have one by eight, one by six connectors. There will only be this version of the card. Uh, there's not gonna be board partner version, so this is everything you'll see. And let's clean off the insane amount of thermal paste and just get an idea for what the HBM and the die look like together. So we were doing some thermals earlier and uh, this cooler is not the best in the world. We've talked about this cooler on all the Founders Edition cards and this particular GPU does not only draw a lot of power but it's got HBM around it drawing power. And the thermal paste here, just to kind of be clear, it's not bad that there's a lot of it. There's just a lot of it because there's a lot of surface area to cover because you've got HBM and the GPU and hopefully we can illustrate that once we clean it off. So like Vega, this card and like the V100, which came out first and had HBM, this card also has HBM. So the V100 was a, uh, an enterprise solution, $10,000 developer kit that came with the first Volta GPU. And this is a $3,000 variant. The goal of this card is not gaming. Uh, Volta will probably go that direction soon, but it is actually things like machine learning. And so HBM is beneficial in that space particularly, and the extra cost really doesn't matter when you're dealing with people who have a lot of money to do things like machine learning, because getting it done faster, uh, of course, will help pay it off, whereas just gaming, you don't really, don't really care. You just need it to be affordable. So you can see the four uh, HBM modules on there. All four of them flank the GPU proper. The GPU and the HBM modules are all on the substrate together. So they have a very short distance to communicate, which is one of the benefits of HBM. It's also got a 3072 bit wide memory bus, if memory serves. And uh, that's another part of the reason bandwidth on this card is pretty high compared to what we typically see with NVIDIA GPUs. This should be clean enough for now. We don't really need to get the stuff out of the corners uh, and risk scratching capacitors or things like that. But that's, uh, so that's the Titan V GPU, the proper GPU. This is a Taiwan made one. It is called GV100, so that's known, dash 400, that's new. Uh, and it's an A1 rev, which means it's one of the, the first production rev basically. And the spacing you see between the HBM is effectively uh, an epoxy resin that brings the surface of the interposer all level up with the HBM and the GPU. So we actually can't see the interposer right now. It's underneath that epoxy resin. Uh, it's a protecting layer. If you, uh, interposers are actually very fragile. If I were to do what I'm doing right now, just with my fingernail cleaning paste out, you do that to an interposer that's exposed, you can actually kill it and uh, that kills your GPU. But this has the epoxy resin layer that should help out a bit and prevent any concerns on that front. So there's our GPU, all shiny. This is about a truckload of thermal paste. You could do multiple i9 CPUs with this. Man, look at that. <laughs> Again, that's not like, it's not a bad thing. It's a lot of surface area to cover, but it's just kind of amusing. Actually with, with GPUs, it, with CPUs, there's kind of a limit on the IHS to how much compound you can put before you're actually making performance worse. With GPUs, that's not really the case. It's not, it's just exposed. There's no IHS to worry about. The more paste you get in there, it, like the, if there's excess, it'll come out the side, so it's okay. Uh, so let's get a look at the PCB. We'll come back to the cooler. The PCB is gonna be a bit of work here because there's a lot of thermal pads. Uh, and we need to kind of be careful removing them. I have spares I can put back on in their place, but that's working surprisingly very well, actually. These are kind of like a cloth thermal pad. I've removed them by hand before and they're very easy to destroy. They just kind of fray if you use your fingernails. So you need a really thin 
tool to get in there and get those off. We've successfully removed that. Let's just put that to the side right now. Put that back on there later. Might as well get some of these others off. Oh, actually, is this more VRM over here? This is more VRM over here. So we have VRM over here, and we have part of the VRM over here. It's pretty interesting. This is what you would... It's, it's per, getting pretty close to optimal VRM design because if you think of the Vega cards, the reference Vega boards, those had that L-shaped VRM that came like this. And that's also a very good design. They get the VRM components closer to the core. It allows for a more consistent voltage and power throughput across uh, the entire GPU. And it also reduces propagation delays. Uh, so this would be a continuation of that idea of getting a more optimal VRM layout. Now, the reason they can do this on both AMD Vega and the new NVIDIA test, or, uh, Titan V100, or Titan V, rather, with a V100, is because there's no GDDR. So we're not surrounding the GPU with all that stuff. We can surround it with the VRM instead. So we've got that uncovered. We'll look at the, uh, the names in a moment. Let's see if we can find the voltage controller. Make sure it's not on the back first. It's where you can really see that fabric, the sort of almost canvas weave coming out of the sides of these thermal pads. These are really thin. They're woven. Uh, they, because they are pretty thin, you have less concern of thermal resistivity, uh, sort of optimization issues that you would have with thicker pads. As long as they still contact what they're trying to contact, you're good. All right, that's pretty much everything. So first of all, what are we leaving room for here? That's just just uh, cutouts. That's all we're seeing here. Now this sort of gloss, uh, this plate, although it is aluminum, is not going to do a lot for you. We've got a gloss, uh, sort of vinyl coating type thing here. And that's to prevent any electrical shorts to the plate or to any other objects in the vicinity. So that's not helping us with thermals at all. Uh, and it's not really necessarily meant to. You get some direct contact in these channels here, but it doesn't do a whole lot. It's primarily cosmetic. And we've tested that before with thermal couples on the backside and everything. So let's look at the VRM core components. So we have a 16 phase as advertised. It's going to be doubled in some capacity. Uh, we'll have Buildzoid analyze the specifics. Actually, we've got a couple more phases over here, probably for memory. So we'll have Buildzoid analyze the specifics of the VRM, but layout core layout is uh, 16 phase. And then we've got another setup, another one over here, another phase over there. So let's take a look at the cooler something I know more about. Bill Doid's got the PCB, I'll take the cooler. So cooler, this is the base plate. The base plate mounts directly to the PCB. You can see individual standoffs. These are raised from the aluminum base plate that connect directly with the MOSFETs uh, and with other board components. We have some raised elements over here as well, connecting with various uh, inductors and MOSFETs and a couple of caps are connected to this plate as well. So that's the base plate. Let's get this off and take a look at the actual cooler and the fan. This, these screws are for mounting the fan. So if we remove that, the fan will come loose, but we can't get at it right now anyway. So might as well wait for that. What size is that? 2.5 over here. So that's a 2.5, that's a two. Okay, so a 2.5 and a two. All right, so we've gotten that loose. I think we need to pull these embellishments off as well, and that for sure needs to come out. Okay, here's your Titan V plate. Nothing special. It's the same as all the others. And there's the window. And this looks actually a little bit revised. At least, yeah, this is definitely revised, actually. Okay, so the cooler is not 100% the same as the previous Founders Edition coolers. It is actually a little bit different. Are we still screwed in somewhere, or can I just sort of work this out? Okay, there we go. 
So the difference is from memory from the last time, these little flanges are new over here and the bumps in here are new, the channels that are sort of chamfered. Other than that, some of the stuff that's the same as previously, this border over here with the foam damper for noise reasons, and then it's just a standard aluminum fin stack. You can see straight down the center, no heat pipes because it is in fact a vapor chamber cooler, uh, which you can kind of tell, I mean, it's, it's partly obvious, but also, well, I should say partly obvious because there's no heat pipes, there's no density down the fins of anything other than just air channels. And this plate here uh, has this sort of, what you, you might think is a mini copper heat pipe, so that's an indicator of vapor chamber. So that's our cooling block. It is a little revised from previously, but not a whole lot. And other than that, you're left with this, which is the blower fan, standard radial fan, uh, and I guess we could get the ratings on that if we wanted to take that apart too. But that would require removing all this stuff, and it's going to be the same as all the previous fans from NVIDIA. So, uh, so that's basically the Titan V. There's not much left to take apart here. So I think what we are left with at this point is a PCB that needs analysis. So this will be looked at by Buildzoid on our channel. You can subscribe to make sure you catch that content when it goes up. Buildzoid's gonna be doing a full analysis of the VRM and its capabilities. He has quite a few curiosities about the power, uh, potential limitations on this board and GPU, or at least on the GPU. And uh, we've got some notes on that as well. So make sure you check back. Our game benchmarks will be up first. After the game benchmarks, we intend to be posting some uh, production level benchmarks thermals, power, noise, all that stuff. So that's all for this time. If you like the mod mat that we made, you can pre-order it if you go to store.gamersnexus.net slash mod mat, one word. Or if you want to help us out directly, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.